We are underway at round two of the Gorick Spring Series and I got an absolute shocker of a start because I was faffing about turning this camera on and then they said go and I missed my pedal but I managed to get like just about get away and I'm sat in fourth place here so Ben's leading it out and my oh my was this the fastest start of a mountain bike race ever the testosterone was flowing I could feel it the rocket could feel it we hit this climb and it was full gas Mr Freshwater in the hunk kit was absolutely lighting it up he is 49 year, years old, he told me. What a beast. And I managed to move up a place here because Luke was letting the wheel go. So I thought, your boy will show some power and shut that gap down. But at the top of this climb, I'll be honest, I was seeing stars. You're going to have to ignore the heart rate a little bit. It will catch up. I'm doing it through my Garmin watch at the moment because my heart rate straps giving up the ghost on me. But yeah, this course, you saw it a couple of weeks ago, it's at a similar location, so it's very similar, but they've mixed it up. It is twisty, punchy, and you've really got to be on point, technically. There's nothing, like, outrageous, but I'm going to show you the reason why I can't keep up with the front of the race. Here's the excuses. But yeah, we're going absolutely full gas right now, and the reason why is because this course probably has, like, I'm going to say a hundred corners in a lap. You are going round a corner all the time. You go left, right, left, right. And if you're losing that second here, second there on each corner. And what I did notice is when I was on Ben and Luke's wheel following them, in a minute we do get past Richard who's on the front. When they were going round some of the corners, they don't touch the brakes. They just shoot round, hold their speed, and they're probably saving energy. Whereas me... I touch the brakes. Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, well just don't touch the brakes, Georgie boy. The thing is, it's a confidence thing, it's a skill thing. Miss bottle by Del Boy, poor show. And I tell you what, were they trying to sabotage me? They missed that first bottle and it almost hit my bike. Next bottle around after this corner, they miss it again. But yeah, you realise how important technical skills are. And when you race against people that are better than you, look, that corner there, the, the wheel's gone and then I'm having to sprint to catch back up. And every little sprint adds up, adds up. And just here, this is where they sabotage me again and the bottle hits my bike. Thank you, Dell boy. But yeah, as I was saying, every time you let that wheel go and you've got to catch it up, it's a match burn. Look how quick Ben got round that corner. Look, and then there's a gap again. What's George got to do again? Sprint to close it down. Now, I know that is the area I need to improve on. And without sounding like an absolute chopper, I, well, I've seen people's numbers, what they can do on Strava, etc. In terms of just raw power and numbers, I can match Ben and Luke. The problem is, when you involve like the technical ability, stuff like that, like up these climbs, I'm holding the wheel, etc., but when you start to add in the corner in and how they're recovering round corners, you see just how important it is. And I know I need to work on it. I'm waiting for some better weather. That's my excuse. But I, I honestly don't know whether I'd benefit from like seeing a coach or something that coaches downhill or enduro or whatever. I'm not sure because I don't know if it's just a case of trust in the bike when you're throwing it into a corner or if it's just a case that I am an absolute scaredy cat but watching this back and in the moment I knew it was happening and there was nothing I could do because in all honesty I felt like I was absolutely shifting like I felt like I was descending faster and better than I ever have but when you're racing that level above you do realize just how important every second is every corner is that you're burning a match on. But yeah, these little cut climbs get super, super spicy on the legs. They don't look like much on camera, but believe me, they are steep. And every time I was just thinking, these boys need to slow down. The one thing you know, though, is when you're racing the top people in the country, like Luke's elite, Ben comes second at national champs last year. I think Mr. Freshwater's like a top five vet in the country. Uh, no joke, they just do not ease off the gas. It is full send, full ponies every time. So like you come out of this corner here 
and it is just whack. Look, seven, eight hundred, nearly nine hundred watts to get up that climb and just to hold the wheel. Like, that is mental. And then you know that they're going to keep that on for the whole one hour 36. And in my head, I was just saying, Jesus, I don't think that I can maintain this. I'm not going to lie. This is as hard as I've pushed on lap one. And partly it was because what I was saying, I was sprinting to catch back up. So when they're recovering, I'm burning a match. And Del Boy said that to me after. But it was, it was such a good race. I was absolutely loving it in like... Well, was I loving it? It was painful. But, you know, for some reason, us nutter cyclists enjoy that pain. But look, straight away here, you can see that gap opening up. That doesn't look like much, but that's a couple of seconds again that I'm going to have to shut down. And that's on a downhill where Ben's recovering. So you can see, look, I'm, he's bang on, on Mr. Freshwater's wheel. And he's probably just cruising down there now. Whereas I'm absolutely ripping it out of every corner to shut down these couple of bike lengths. It looks marginal, but it is so, so important at the front of the race. And you don't realise it until you get to watch this back. Look, like I've had to sprint 800 watts there to get back on the wheel. They're probably, Ben was probably doing half of that amount because he was already glued to the wheel and he had recovered on that descent. So the plan of action is Georgie Boy either needs some lessons from an expert downhiller, hit me up if you are one, and he just needs to ride off road more. It's as simple as that. I've listened to a lot of podcasts with people on and they're just like mountain bikers and they've been saying a lot of people don't ride off road enough and I am one of them people look like Ben's probably recovering down here cruising getting himself together because he knows he's going to whack it out of this corner and he does whack it look and I knew that I needed to go with that right there I just didn't quite have the power to get past into this bit so it did open up a gap that was a thermonuclear attack by Ben and look at the gap he put into us straight away I mean fair play and do you know why that was why he was capable of doing that because he recovered on the downhill section like I think people think like XC is just about having the legs the lungs it is not it is about you've got to have legs lungs skills full package you've got to be able to fuel while you're racing and it's all things I'm learning on but then Luke moves up past me because he sees the danger of that gap um Mr Freshwater does shut the gap down to Ben again but it all goes hell for leather again in a second I think Ben put the attack in tested the water and then you can see he's just in like cruise mode now he said to me before the race he wasn't going to go to the front till lap three so that is a complete lie because he's at the front now attacking people but you can see Luke's just trying to get past because he wants to you can't let that gap go around this course once it opens up it's, re it's really tricky and it's look so Luke's gone straight away and I think I've tried to get past as well and just chopped chopped to chop to grand vet right there or, or a veteran how dare me but in all honesty I knew that Ben was pulling away look at the gap he's putting in and I knew I needed to go with it right now but look again look how fast Luke is around the corners and look he opens up gaps to me it doesn't look like much on the camera but it's a second every corner second 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 and like I said if it's a hundred corners I've lost a hundred seconds or burnt a hundred matches sprinting out. But yeah, we did manage to shut the gap down to Ben, but I was in a seriously bad way right now. And I need to get a heart rate strap. My heart was way over 180 right now. I remember just thinking the pace needs to ease for me for just a split second. These corners here is where I really noticed it. They do not break into here. They just sling it round and then whack it out the other side. And smooth is fast, as they say, and just keeping that speed and momentum is just so, so important. But, yeah, so I think we did manage to, because that pace just re lifted so much around that section, I think we managed to gap Mr. Freshwater a little bit here. And the boys were still just absolutely <laughs> whacking it. It was full, full gas. You could tell... It was a battle of the big dogs and everyone wanted to win this one. Look, foot out, flat out. Go up, boys. But yeah, so 
this next bit we come down and then into another little spicy climb and this is where it all started to kick off again every time it went uphill they really did whack it now I, th I genuinely think it was just because they, they were so well recovered from the descents. But look, you come out of this corner and you just know, bang, 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 they're on the pedals. Look, 900 watts, 800 watts to get up there. And you know you've got to go with it because once the gap goes, it's game over at this level. You need to be on the wheel. And that was my motivation at this point. I was like, just stay with them, stay with them. But even there, look, bike lengths have opened up out of this corner bike lamps have opened up and every time I'm just like sprinting that little bit to close look you can see Luke's like right on Ben's wheel whereas me I'm having to do a little bit of a surge to shut it down and there's only so many matches Georgie boy's got before he goes absolutely pop <laughs> and he ain't got many more at this point I remember thinking every time the, the little gap opened up I was thinking you, you're you're on a tightrope right now, Georgie boy, and or, what's the saying on a thin rope, thin line rocket? I don't know what the saying nice. is. I'm on thin ice, that's the one that I'm trying to think of. I'm one taking this commentary, sign me up, Eurosports. But yeah, I was on thin ice right now. Every time I just, I could feel the legs saying, you're not going to be able to do this again. You're not going to be able to do this again. And we've got like the main, it's not a, and there's no long climbs here, but I'd say the main climb is like a little bit of a switchbacky one. It's probably 30 odd seconds. But then Luke puts a dig in here. And originally I thought, is Ben going to go with it or expect me to come round? But he did just go straight with it. And this attack hurt like three, 400 watts. And I think he was trying to, trying to break straight away. And I hit Ben's wheel there and had an absolute nightmare. So just as the attack went... I then had a couple of terrible corners and then I'm having to sprint 600 watts to get back on. And I think I take this corner awfully as well. Look, that's what I mean. Look how much speed they go into the corner, come out of it with. It's crazy. And those bike lamps are just killer, not just physically, but mentally, because I knew that... Every corner we went round, I was thinking to myself, well, they're going to open up a little bit of a gap and Eve even there, just like tiny little split seconds. And through this next bit, you're really going to get to see it because it's a twisty little little bit here. And they were just flinging around these corners. And I was like, I thought I was flying. Look, I'm chopping corners there to try and shut the gap down. But that this was a big attack by Luke. And it broke me a little bit because it was at a point where I knew they were going to be super fast through this wooded section. So look... What's that? That's that's probably three seconds they've put into me just through five corners and now I'm having to whack it to shut the gap down. And it was the same on these bottom corners here. They're little small berms and they don't break through them. I just touched the brakes and I was trying to tell myself, just don't touch the brakes. But look, at, I'm having to do like eight, 800, 900 watts now and I do shut it down just through raw power but... It really makes me think that if I just can dial in the skills a little bit, I'd be so much better at mountain bike. But as soon as I close that gap down, they start pinging it again through these corners. And then you're in the same position. So you've burnt a match to shut it down. And then you know you're going to have to burn another match in a second to shut it down again. And I'll tell you what. The boys gave me a lesson in cornering skill and power because the fitness those two had was absolutely phenomenal. And for me to still be here now is, is it amazing. Like, look, I'm still sprinting 700 watts to shut the gap down. And I do shut it down again. But as I said, your boy is about to go pop and it is going to be race over, unfortunately. And after that, it is not very exciting because the two in front duke it out and I end up being, well, semi-solo apart from Mr. Freshwater was chasing me down every lap and I could see him getting a little bit closer. But I did manage to hold him off. But I stayed with the boys just about for a lap. Look, same again. I've lost the wheel through this twisty little section and it doesn't look like much but look how close Ben is to Luke. He did not give an inch. He didn't put a foot wrong. And that was the difference. 
the speed through the corners, how he could recover, and I'm not making excuses, but this course does massively suit these two. Maybe I think it probably suits Ben more because there's no long drags, that all the climbs are short and punchy, but all of the twisty technical sections, they're not like, there's no rock gardens or anything mad, but it's like a technical course in terms of how twisty it is, if that makes sense. But yeah, we're coming into like the main climb of the race now and I'm I'm clinging on for dear life right now. The heart rate's up a little bit, but I'm not even sure that's accurate because it's through my wrist strap and we turn into I think this is where we turn into like the the main climb here, yeah. So we're starting to ramp up and it doesn't look like much on camera, but it is a spicy little climb. But yet again, look, I've let the wheel go. They're glued, Ben's glued to him. So I'll take my hat off. Absolutely pinging he was. It's all that coaching he's been getting. I need to get myself a coach rocket. I'm not allowed. Not allowed. Got to coach myself. But yeah, so you can see gaps opened up again. Georgie Boy's going to have to bury himself again, coming out of a corner to shut it down. And you know the lights are going to go out in a second. I could not do it. I was trying so hard. I wanted to stay with him. I wanted to make a wicked video. But that is all you're going to get. If you take one thing from this video. And it's one thing I'm going to take. Do not. Is that Del Boy again? Del Boy's everywhere doing bottles. Christ. Del Boy didn't do bottles for me. Deserted me. Didn't he rock it? No, he, he was offering, I'm joking, I'm joking. You had a temper tantrum when you said no. <coughs> yeah, I didn't, well, I told him before the race I was going to take it all with me. I'm a top boy like that, I didn't want to stress him out. But yeah, look, the wheels are starting to fall off here now for Georgie Boy and they're opening up the gap. I think I do try and shut it down again out of this corner and I, I do a little rip, five, six hundred watts, but... Honestly, I at this point, I was sign, seal, delivered, dispatched. There was nothing I could do, and it was all down to the cornering. So one thing I know I'm going to work on, I'm going to work hard on it this year. I say it every year, and then I don't actually do it. This time, I'm doing the little training vlogs and stuff like that to hold myself accountable and make sure I actually go and ride my mountain bike rather than always training on the road because I've seen it here I've watched 20 minutes you've heard me for 17 minutes waffling on about how I'm terrible round corners so it is time to do something about it but fair play to Ben and Luke they were absolutely flying Ben put like over three minutes into me but as I said this course is his dream course. I'm not making excuses, but it is. And it's a good course for Luke because he's so fast around the technical sections. But that is it, ladies and gentlemen. It ended up being just a survival for me. A bit of a TT to get to the end of the race, but I managed to hold on and take third place. Fair play, Ben took first. Luke got second. And yeah, as I said, I just survived round for third place i hope you enjoyed this and you can take something from it and i will catch you in the next video